Hey everybody, and welcome to the Meditation Mama podcast. My name is Terry Lee, and I'm so excited that you're here joining me, and you might be wondering, what's this podcast about? Well, it's a mom who meditates who'd like to kind of teach you something about it. So I'd like to begin with this podcast by just telling you a little bit about me and how I've come to be in this position. So let's go back about a decade or so ago. And I had an encounter with, at the time, a stranger who's now a dearest friend of mine. And she had come over one day to sage my house. And saging is an indigenous tradition that um, is a ceremony where you light some sacred herbs and you kind of go around the house cleansing energy and negativity and just kind of you know, leveling out the energetic environment and field. And saging is something that I now do daily as a practice. But at that time, I wasn't aware of, you know, what saging could be or what it does. And so she came over and saged the house because I was feeling quite anxious. I was expecting our third child at the time and I wasn't understanding why I was feeling all of these emotions. And so after doing some research and, you know, talking with a few people, it was brought to my attention that, you know, hey, maybe you should just kind of clear the energy of your house. And I was like, yeah, you know what, whatever. I don't have very much to lose. So she came over and essentially that day pretty much changed the course of my life. So she came over and what unfolded after this was pretty much what I like to call divine intervention. And a few months had passed. I had my third child and there was this void inside of me. There was this feeling of wanting to know more. And so we met a few times here and there and I would ask her all of these spiritual questions that I had And, you know, she started talking to me about past lives and, you know, spirit guides and all of these things that I found so fascinating. And yet I was so open and receptive to them. It was as though it was as though I had read this book before and I forgot about it and I picked it back up and I loved it so much. And I just had so many more questions. And that's pretty much what happened a decade ago. And so fast forward till this moment now and a meditation practice has been a part of my life daily since since those moments and over the course of those years I developed a very strong bond spiritually with what I now call my spirit family and that consists of my spirit guides and guardian angels and ancestors and my higher self and this family of non-physical beings And through them, I was able to communicate with departed loved ones and other spirit guides and other angels that were around me. And it led to beautiful connections that I made, you know, across the world. But then it came back to wanting to share that on a deeper level, wanting to teach that on a deeper level. And what I always came back to was the meditation practice was always coming back to meditation no matter what where when I whatever I did always came back to meditating and so I started teaching meditation to you know a handful of people and those people became very close to me became really good friends and I was grateful for that experience and throughout all of this time over the last decade I was also a mom I was also raising three children. I was also homeschooling three children. I was with them day and night and still am. And so it was so important to me to find this balance. There was so many people in my life that told me, you know, that I'm going to burn myself out and that I'm going to or that I need to take time for myself and there was just so many voices around me that saw that I was trying to do everything all at once but what they didn't understand was that I did have that time to myself because I made sure 
that I found this balance. And this balance was, yes, to be a mom and to take care of my kids and to teach them and homeschool them, raise them. But the, there was still time for me in that day, in that 24 hours, there was still time for me. And I made sure that every day I would set one hour aside for myself and do my meditation practice and take care of myself and journal and really just sit with myself. And that didn't necessarily had to look like, you know, candles lit and crystals out and, you know, sitting in lotus position doing a meditation practice daily. It just looked like myself taking time for me. And then I grew to realize from there that that is what's missing. I find that is what's missing with so many people that I found close to me was that they too were moms and they too had busy lives. But at the end of the day, they just felt burnt out energetically. They felt drained and they were like grasping at straws, trying to figure out what they could do to to help themselves, you know, and perhaps it was a date night or a movie or, you know, just go out and have a drink or two. But, you know, th- that's all fine and dandy. I mean, you know, going to the movies once a week or once a month and having a date night with your significant other. But in order to find that balance and to cultivate that inner peace that I think we're so many of us are looking for, it comes down to a daily practice. It comes down to making time and making yourself a priority every single day, not just every other day. And that's what Meditation Mama is about. It's about putting yourself first and not feeling doubtful or shameful or guilty in any way for putting yourself first. And so the first episode of Meditation Mama podcast is about giving ourselves permission and what that looks like. I think a lot of us, and I can speak for myself, we're looking for permission from other people around us. We were looking for validation, you know, somebody to just say, you deserve a break. You should go, you know, take take a break, go for a walk, go do something. But we were looking for that validation first. Otherwise, it felt as though it felt shameful and it felt almost like taboo in a way to kind of like, you know, I'm going to take an hour for myself today and just go lay in bed and just stare out the window or, you know, do something other than taking care of the house or the kids. And we were waiting for permission in order to do that. But I'm here to remind you that you don't need permission from any outside influences. The only person that you answer to at the end of the day is yourself. And you, didn't, you need to make sure that that self is happy, fulfilled, and taken care of. And listen, not everybody is going to understand. That is something that I think we need to understand collectively, is that our decisions in life is not going to be viewed as acceptable to other people. It's just not. Not everybody likes the same things. Not everybody likes oranges or peaches. And that's fine. So at the end of the day, not everybody's going to understand, but you. The only person who will is you. So you need to listen to yourself and you need to feel good about those decisions. That's a big key factor is you feeling good about yourself and about your decisions. Another thing is to get excited of getting to know yourself and getting excited for alone time. And I think a lot of people that I've met over the course of, you know, a decade of doing this were scared to be alone. They were scared. They were scared to feel alone and be alone. And that's why they needed maybe outside influences and outside noises and They didn't want to be alone with their feelings because they were so nervous and scared to see what was going to bubble up to the surface. And I think that that's really important because meditation, yes, is about getting quiet and finding that inner space. But meditation is also about feeling what's coming up and feeling what's bubbling up to the surface that needs your attention in order to get to know yourself better in order to to know what makes you tick and to know what makes you want to grow and find creativity and be happy. And so at the end of the day, at the end of all the chaos and 
the busyness and the routines and the schedules and whatnot, it's important for you to take time for you. And that meditation hour might look so different for every single one of you listening right now. It might it might be that you want to sit in lotus position with candles. And it might be that you want to go for a walk by yourself. It might also be that you want to just go for a long car ride and just turn off the music or turn on the music. It might be that you want to stare outside your window at your desk or table and just admire the breeze and the trees and the way that the sun shines in. And as long as the distractions are put away, which does include your phone, and you're just listening to your inner self, that is a form of meditation. That is a form of self-love. It could also be rolling out a yoga mat. It could be kickboxing classes or getting your heart pumping and racing. It's putting you in the present moment. And that essentially is what meditation is all about. It's about being in the present moment. It's about being in the now. And in those moments, we can learn self-discovery of who we truly are. And we can learn what makes us tick and what, what brightens our day and what kind of creativity that we offer to the world and offer to ourselves. And I think that if we cultivated a community of moms who's willing and ready to put themselves first, there would be so much less burnouts in our society of exhaustion and tiredness and searching for something outside of ourselves because we're always searching for something outside of ourselves we're always searching for a purpose but what if your purpose is doing what you're doing at the very moment we just need a little bit more time and space to grow our own selves and a meditation practice offers that so don't shy away from the word meditation. I know quite a few moms who have shied away from the word meditation because they felt like it was a commitment to a time and a setup. And and when I mean setup, I mean, you know, having to get ready for something. When at the end of the day, we're not looking to you know, make another setup for anybody, whether that be your children or your partner, whatever. you just want to sit down and do nothing. And I get that. And meditation offers that. It offers sitting down and doing seamlessly nothing. It just means that we need to be more in the present moment and putting away those distractions. And then asking ourselves questions. It doesn't need to be hard. And so I leave you at the end of this first podcast with asking yourself, what permission can you give yourself this week in order to discover yourself a little bit more intimately? What permission can you give yourself? And with that being said, I would like to wish you a wonderful week. And I would also like to remind you that you are worthy of that time to yourself. Signed, Meditation Mama.